So the challenge really is, within the next 15 minutes, how can I teach a complete beginner the art and science of editing and creating high performing video ads for Facebook? There's a lot of theoretical information on the internet on how to create Facebook ads that sell. How do you actually take these theories and put them into effect? In today's video, I wanna share with you guys a step-by-step -step tutorial that you can use to edit your video ads for Facebook. I've used the same process to train video editors within our agency. I'm also gonna show you how to create iterations of an ad and also how to create variations from that same ad. Welcome to the video. If you're new here, my name is Mo. I'm a lawyer turned creative strategist and I now run a creative agency where we help six to seven figure e-com brands grow using the power of high performing ad creatives. And on this channel particularly, I talk about my wins, my losses and my journey. So if that's something of interest to you, you know where the subscribe button is. And for the purposes of this tutorial, I'm going to be using Premiere Pro, but honestly, you can use any video editing software that you like. Because in a bit you understand that it's not actually the video editing that matters, it's all about sequencing. Also, the approach that we're going to take is far from dogmatic. Even if I've spent 10 to 15 million pounds on Facebook ads, I can't give you five winning ads that you can copy and paste your way to success. For you to create winning ads, there will be an element of critical thinking. And that element of critical thinking is what I really want to convey in this video. So if you are looking for five ads that you can copy and paste, this probably isn't the video for you. Now, the first part of this equation is a paradigm shift. Understanding that your Facebook ad isn't one video. Think of it as a puzzle and you have multiple pieces that come together to form that puzzle. This is a document that I use to train our internal video editors and the concept really is your ad needs to be broken down into multiple elements. You can call it sequences, some people call it shots. Now go back to every single one of your winning ads and I can guarantee that every one of your winning ads contain at least three of these elements if not all five. The first element is our hook. A hook is going to make or break your ad. Now your hook can be broken down even further. Within your hook you can have sexual innuendos, you can start off your hook with a negative emotion before and after. It can create curiosity or it can be just weird visuals. Now the next element is the how does it work or product features element. Now within this section you've got multiple shots such as what is it made up of, a tutorial of how it works, what's in the box. Then we move on to what results does it bring or benefits. And this section can be further broken down into emotional benefits, health benefits, financial benefits. Then you've got your social proof further broken down into customer images, review screenshots or even simple text elements elements within your ad and then you have a call to action further broken down into a standard call to action and also an offer call to action and this is a good reference point not just for editing ads but also for your briefs when you're sending out a brief to a content creator or if it's just you creating content refer back to these five elements and try and capture shots that incorporate these five elements and once you have a good understanding of this the rest is fairly simple you have all the pieces to your puzzle and now you can place these pieces in different places to create different ads, iterations and variations. I'm going to quickly talk about this, but I'm not going to go in depth because you will understand this part as we start editing our ad. This is what I call a framework or methods of how you communicate your ad message, right? For example, problem agitate solution framework, a solution driven ad, a before and after ad, or even the trend ad or call out gifts. All of these frameworks are created by essentially mixing and matching these five elements. Now enough with the theory, let's apply this practically. Completely off topic, but it's like 25 degrees. We don't have air cons in the UK and it's humid. Heat from the light coming in. I can't really turn on my fan because I'm recording. So I'm just going to continue the rest of the video in this vest and make sure you hit that thumbs up button. <laughs> for the effort. All right, jokes aside, bringing it all together. So I'm in Premiere Pro. The whole process starts with the brief itself. The content creator was instructed to capture shots that incorporate these elements. So I've already got a bunch of these shots. Now back inside of Premiere Pro, I've got raw videos that contains hooks, how it works and results. All these clips are gonna be my visuals. Now something that we've stopped doing recently is 
face to camera content we've once seen a decline in performance with face to camera content again this is going to be different for different ad accounts but within the accounts that we run we've just seen overall that face to camera content doesn't work so what we now do is just get the content created to shoot visuals or videos and we use ai to generate voiceovers. Now for my voiceover, I have a script that follows the problem agitate solution framework. If you wanna learn how I generate scripts using ChatGPT, I've got a video, link's gonna be in the video somewhere or in the description below. And if you also wanna learn how we generate AI voiceovers, I've got another video that demonstrates that process, link will be attached. I've got my voiceover on my timeline. I'm going to play this voiceover. I love spending time outdoors with my buddy, but the muddy paw prints all over my floors and furniture. Not so much. It was always a chore to clean up after, and my dog clearly didn't enjoy having his paws clean. Fast forward to now. My dog's paws are clean and my home stays clean too. So what changed? I found... Paw cleaning cup. Here's what's been great about it. Easy cleaning. I just add some water and a bit of their recommended shampoo to the cup, put in my dog's paw, and give it a little twist. The soft silicone bristles get the dirt out. Doesn't bug my dog? That's a big plus for me. They have three sizes to pick from, so it's good for any dog. It's just one of those things that makes dog ownership a little bit easier. So this voiceover is going to be my first reference point. And then all I'm doing with the visuals is I'm going to go into the hook bit. All right. We're going to go ahead and introduce a problem that the product solves. Now, what type of hook do I use? Well, I'm going to take reference from one of these examples. I'm gonna go ahead with this specific one because the product that we're promoting is sort of weird when you use it. I'm gonna go for the clips and, you know, for example, that, that clip right there. For Premiere Pro, it's I, you select an in point and O for an out point. And all I'm doing is dragging and dropping. I love spending time out so that's our hook, right? Now going back to the framework again, what's next? Hook shots, but agitate, right? We're gonna demonstrate how the problem is affecting our customers' life. Within my hook section, I've got multiple shots where the dog's making a mess, in point, out point, drag and drop, right? That is all of the technical skills that you need to have when it comes to editing Facebook ads. I love spending time doors with my buddy but the muddy paw prints off and what i'm gonna do for the rest of the voiceover is go through the clips drag and drop go through the clips drag and drop that's it and one thing you want to ensure is that the visuals match the audio you know you don't want to be talking about something but then you're showing your audience something else that's just going to confuse them i'm not going to go through the whole thing bit by bit let's just fast forward this and boom here we are i've got a bunch of clips that i've selected, dragged and dropped. I'm gonna mute this bit just to demonstrate what we're doing with visuals. Again, referring back to this doc here, the first three seconds hook, hook agitate, and then we intro the, the product as the solution. So this is our hook, hook agitate, we're agitating the problem. We're really showing our audience how the problem affects their life. You know, muddy paw prints all over the floor, all over your furniture dirty floors, it just makes your life very difficult, right? And it also demonstrates how the dog just isn't happy with everything that's happening. And then we have the solution. Visually within the solution, we're just introducing the product. We're also introducing the benefits of the product. You can't see that visually, but that's within the audio. So if I just play the audio here. I found oh, a cleaning cup. Here's what's been great about it. Easy cleaning. I just add some water. So easy cleaning, you know, that's a benefit. Visually, we're also showing a tutorial of how to use the product whilst we're talking about the benefits. So you see how it's just these things, a tutorial visual whilst the voiceover talks about the benefits. And this really is how you create what I call the base layer of your ad. This is not a complete ad yet. With this being completed, you've done majority of the heavy lifting. The next bits are adding text elements. Now for this, you can use Premiere Pro or you can use any other transcription software that's on the internet. I do have a video that talks about AI tools that you can use to transcribe your video ads. I personally like to use CapCut when it comes to generating captions, just because it's versatile. I'm able to manipulate the software in various ways, especially our designers as well. And it just gives us a lot more flexibility. So this is my ad, right? This is ad one. Now to create an iteration of this ad, I'm just gonna drag copy and paste, right? This is ad two. How is this ad two? 
we've taken another clip and we've done a hook. So this is hook one and this is hook two. And really it's that simple to create a hook iteration. I can do the same for the CTA. I can do the same for the body. So when you're in the ad account, in fact, I'm just gonna take you into the ad account. When you're in the ad account and you see that a particular type of hook is doing really well, but it's not getting the purchases, then what you can do is you can take that hook and iterate your best performer with that hook. And that really is how you optimize your ads. Now we're not done with this. What I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna go ahead and export this video and bring it onto CapCuts. Another thing that you need to keep in mind when you look at these clips, one thing that you'll notice is none of these clips are longer than two to three seconds. In the editing world, we call this a jump cut. The purpose of keeping a visual no longer than two to three seconds is so you can keep your audience visually stimulated. Nobody wants to watch a boring ad. Your ad can be ugly, fair enough, but your ad shouldn't be boring. Once you grab the attention, it's crucial that you're also able to hold that attention. And one way to do that is just by ensuring that your clips are no longer than two to three seconds each. And if you do have a clip that is longer than two to three seconds, for example, these clips here, I've actually speed ramped these clips, i.e. I've increased the speed to do that on Premiere Pro. All you need to do is right click, click on speed, slash duration and increase the speed. You've got the option to speed ramp in any video editing software, be it CapCut, Descript, VDIO, even on Canva. So after exporting our base layer video ad with three hook iterations, what I've done is I've gone ahead and brought that clip into CapCut. For the purpose of keeping this video short, I'm not gonna go through the whole process of generating captions, but it is pretty simple. You click on text and then you click on auto captions and it literally generates captions for you. Now, something that I like to do and I recommend this to all our designers is to keep the captions short and sweet. You don't wanna have more than five to six words in a single text bracket or a single text box. And the idea behind that is to really keep the text legible and easy to consume for your viewers. The easier it is for them to consume content, the longer you can actually hold their attention. And if I scrub through the video, you can see there's like captions all across. I've also added a text element to our hook. And this is what I call upscaling a hook. What we've done here is visually, we've got this as our visual hook, but then with the text, we're also creating curiosity so we're essentially combining two hook concepts into one you know when someone reads that they're going to be like what is this one curiosity and then the motion of what's happening here is also you know very weird and it appears sexual sexual innuendos tend to work really well on facebook especially when it comes to hooks but don't overdo it now the other thing with our text elements is save zones Again, within this doc, we've got certain technicals such as save zones. You wanna ensure that your text is within the save zone. I don't think I've mentioned this at the start, but these are the aspect ratios. Now, the pratfall effect. We've heard a lot of marketers talk about the pratfall effect. How do you actually apply this? Because of the fact that this is a UGC video, you've already applied the pratfall effect. It's not high end, it is lo-fi content. So that's one way to implement the pratfall effect. The other way to implement the pratfall effect is with your text elements. Instead of you know aligning it perfectly, you just twist it around. It just gives the ad a feeling of being organic. And that's really the whole idea, right? We're competing against organic content. Keep that in mind every time you're editing your videos. Now, once we've got our text all generated and we've also got like three hook iterations, the rest is simple. Export, so you export the video, call it whatever your naming convention is, hook one. Then you take the next I video, love, drag and drop. I love my dog. Export that too, that's iteration two, iteration three, four, five, and so on. And this is essentially how you create a Facebook ad that is super simple to actually edit, but it's super technical because we're implementing a lot of advertising slash marketing elements. It's well thought through, it's strategic. And this really is what you call creative strategy within the content that you create. Okay, how do you make a variation of this ad? There's multiple ways to make variations of the same ad. If I go back to our mural board at the start, 
the script that we generated was a problem agitate solution script. The next script that you generate could be a solution driven script. A variation could be you do the same thing, you use the same pieces of content, but you now have a different voiceover. One way to understand the difference between iterations and variations is with iterations, you're changing one single element at a time. If you're just changing the hook, that personally to me isn't a variation. It's an iteration of the hook. If I'm changing the voiceover, that's a voiceover iteration. But if I'm changing the voiceover and I'm also changing the visuals, because we've changed two elements, that is what I classify within our agency as a variation. Hopefully that makes sense. If you do have any questions, which I assume you will, drop it in the comment section below. In terms of where you're gonna find this document, a link to this will be attached in the comment section below. It is gonna be paid because as simple as it looks, this has been created with a lot of effort internally by myself and also the team. However, I will be sharing a lot of this stuff on my channel. So if you need quick access to this document and you don't wanna wait for my next video, then go ahead and purchase this. If not, you can always subscribe to the channel and get free information. That's pretty much it from me for today. I hope I've been able to share some useful insights. If you've liked the video, as usual, make sure you hit that like button. I'm gonna go ahead and grab me some cold to drink. I'll catch you guys in the next one.